Hi, I'm Bob with LPS Computer. I'm going to show you how to replace an ink tube system in a DesignJet 800-500 uh, printer. This is a pretty common uh, replacement. Um, this is the if you ordered a kit from us, this is what it would come, what it would look like. It's got the tube system in it, the setup print heads, um, instructions, uh, a rubber glove which I never use, and whatever else is in there. Uh, to get started, we need the machine in a ready state, and right now this machine is ready and idling. So we're, we're going to go into the setup me <coughs> menu, and then go into the utilities menu. We enter the utilities menu by pressing the enter button and the up arrow at the same time and releasing them. Now you can see there are several options here. One of these is service utilities. That one's already highlighted. So I'm just going to hit enter. And now we will scroll, scroll down to uh, replace the tube systems. Or maybe I was going to scroll up to them. Change uh, tubes. Okay. Change tubes and hit enter. So now it will ask us, do we really want to do that? Yeah, we want to really want to do that. So we'll hit enter again. And what that's going to do is bring the print head or the, or the, uh, the carriage out so we can remove the print heads. Okay, now it wants us to switch the machine off. And uh, it, when it comes up next time, it's going to expect to see a new tube system, and it will. So I'm going to switch the machine off. And unplug it. I'm going to take the top center cover off. And I'm going to do that by taking the two screws out in the back. Okay, these are T15 screws. Let's take them completely out. To remove the top cover, just open the lid and lift straight up on it. This latches in with uh, notches here. There's one on the other side, and it goes over this post. So it's really easy to get back in. Also, this uh, finger right here fits over this part of the uh, end cover. So when you put it back on, just make sure you're on the post. It goes over here, and uh, put screws back in. That's about it. I'm going to move the printer around again. Okay, to get the tube system out, we're going to have to take the print heads out. So they are under the print head uh, cover latch. These are the print heads. Just take those out and set them aside for now. Now, this is all part of the tube system, including these print head ports you see there. And it's attached to the carriage with a T8. So I'm going to loosen that screw. That screw is a captive screw. It's not going to come out. It'll stay with the tube system. There's a, a screw with the, uh, the new tubes. There, that's free. Now we need to move the carriage to the left some and there's a release right here and that's easy to, to miss a lot of people just start yanking on this and they break this right off but if you just pull this out a little it lifts right off the carriage and uh, I'll just lift this up and out of the machine now these tabs are just going to push up in the bottom one pinch them together and they'll come loose and that'll put us to the uh, ink supply station. We'll pull these out. Now to release this, there are thumb grips right here. Push in on both of those, 
this is part of the ink tube system. So we're going to free this up to go. Just lift this side up. This side has a finger on it that fits into a slot. You can see that right here. And it goes down inside. And that's all there is to taking the tube system. Oops. Taking the tube system out of the machine. Now when we turn it off, the machine's going to remember that we asked it to uh, go into the ink tube replacement procedure. When we turn it back on, um, it wants to see, it's going to make the assumption we have a new tube system in there. We're already taking this one out of the wrapper. Here are the setup print heads we'll be using in a minute. And we can start at either with end with, uh, of this actually. I'm going to start on this side just because it's kind of curled that direction. So this has a, a hole right here and this hole has to match up with this peg right here. Let me get a light on that so I can see it a little better. This peg right here needs to get, line up with this hole right here. So I'll put that slot in that opening and then we'll line up that peg and everything else kind of goes together all by itself. That in there. And I'm trying to line up the post down inside here. Usually moving this end piece around a little bit. Oops. No, that went a little quicker than I expected it to. But now make sure you're latched in on both sides here, which it is. And that's all there is to putting the ink supply station end of it in. Now on this, we'll just feed it back through the, the guide here. We have these clips. We're going to push those through the hole. They'll clip in. Same thing with the other one. There are three clips on the 42 inch. So this has, this is a little bit easier than, than the 42 inch would be, but 42 inch is still pretty easy stuff. Yeah, we need to place this where we want it to go. Now here's the thumb tab that we released just a bit ago. And we want to carefully push that down. Oops, I'm not the slot here. Here we go. And that will just clip into place on its own right there. Now we need to move the carriage back over here and place this on the carriage and tighten down the screw. You're not going to make it real tight, just snug it up. And that's that. Now we're ready to add some ink to the machine. And I should mention that this thing is going to check the level of the ink when we turn it back on. If any of these inks are under 20%, it's going to tell you that and it will refuse to prime the tubes. So you need to make sure there's enough ink in the uh, ink cartridges to do the job. Okay, I think we're set. Um, we do need to defeat the top interlock here. Normally what you would do at this point is put the, the uh, top cover back on. This is the interlock switch to tell the machine that the top lid is closed. We're going to lie to it. So now I'm going to plug it back in and turn it on. Now it's telling us we don't have enough ink in the yellow ink cartridge. Which I don't believe because it was working earlier. Let's try it again. Maybe we can trick it. Nope, doesn't like it. Just happened to have another one right here. Okay, it likes that one. It wants us to open the window, so we'll open the window. Just lift the print head cover and insert the setup print heads. So that's what we're going to do. You notice there's no electronics on the back of these 
So the machine doesn't actually know if they're in here or not. It's going to have to take our word for it. It actually comes in handy sometimes when people accidentally get into this mode and they want to get out of it without actually putting those in. A little tip here, this, um, this purple latch on the ink tube system is held in by some very thin plastic. It's not strong. So when you latch it, latch start pulling the printhead latch down. It's a good to use some downward pressure with your thumb on the printhead cover itself to make it a little less stressful on that latch closing it. Okay, so that's closed. Now it wants us to close the window again. So that's what we're doing. Now it's going to check whatever it's checking. And we just follow the instructions from here. Replace the print heads as indicated. So now we open the lid again and we're going to put the regular print heads back in. And what we're going to see here is that all of these print heads now have ink in them, which means the priming uh, procedure was a complete success. These go in the trash, they cannot be used again. Okay, I'm going to pick up the, uh, the latch down here, help it out a little bit with some downward pressure. Okay, this machine's going to go into a print head alignment now and print do the uh, print head alignment printout. So we're going to wait a couple of minutes while that happens. Okay, I finished the print head alignment. Uh, that was successfully completed. Now the machine will ask you if you want to go into a color calibration. And that's totally up to you whether you do that or not. The, if you're just doing line drawings, it probably doesn't matter. Uh, if you're doing any kind of graphics, posters, solid fills, pictures, anything like that, then I would recommend that you go ahead and do that. Uh, it's just a good procedure to keep your machine running at 100%. The, uh, the one last thing I want to show you here is <clears throat> the procedure is slightly different when you're putting in one of our refurbished tube systems. Uh, the 44 inch tube system, uh, all we have are the refurbished ones. The 42 inch tube systems are all we've got for the refurbished tube systems. The difference is you're going to do this entire procedure without pushing the buttons. It's, it's not necessary. You do everything that I've already done. You take the, turn the power off, take the uh, old tube out, put the new one in. And with the power off, let me pull the power. Well, I'm going to cycle the power just so I can unlock the carriage. We will need the carriage out in the service position because I'm going to use a purging tool, which is nothing more than a large capacity syringe with a special needle that we put on here. The needle is, um, well, we customize it in-house. We put a hole in the side of the needle. The reason for that is when we insert this into the printhead port, there's a check valve there and a check valve is a round ball the round ball would close off the end of the needle and it won't allow the ink to come out so we take the ink in from the side and uh, it's a real simple tool but very effective and i just missed my opportunity to get that didn't i well it will come back out again in a minute Okay, I've stopped the carriage out here somewhere near the service position. 
Now, after you've <coughs> replaced the refurbished ink tube system, you won't have print heads in it. So I'm going to remove these to simulate replacing a refurb tube system. So it doesn't matter where you start, but one at a time, we're going to do the same thing to each of these. I'm going to insert this in as far as it goes. Don't, and it just goes in a short distance. And I'm going to hold it vertically with my left hand. We don't want to put any stress on this, left or right, front to back. So we're going to keep it vertical and just draw uh, the air and the ink through the tubes and into the syringe. And I'm not getting air out because this one's already been primed. Normally you would see some air bubbles coming up here and you get to the ink and that would be it for that, uh, that color and you do the same with all of them. Now to get rid of the ink what you would do is take a Ziploc bag, put a paper towel in it and just eject this into the um, Ziploc bag, seal it off and throw it away. So at this point, your machine would be have the um, tube system installed, and it's primed, and you're ready to put the print heads back in. The big difference with this one is that the machine won't know that it has new ink tube system, so it won't go into the print head alignment or uh, do the color calibration. If you want to do those things, then you'll have to choose that from the menu. And that's about it. Of course, you'd finish up by putting the top cover back on and um, you turn it on and go back to work. So that's all there is to replacing an ink tube system and priming it in a design jet 800-500. Of course, we have technical support online at 800-959-1575. You can call, talk to me or one of our other people uh, who, who could help you to do this if you have any questions. Or if you'd like to place an order, we'd sure like to hear from you about that. We're very competitive on our pricing. We stand behind everything that, uh, that we sell. Everything's got a one-year warranty here. And... Uh, I'm happy to keep your older machines going and your newer ones too. Anyway, have a great day.